All right, good afternoon. Today we're going to start going over the comprehension check questions chapter from chapter one. If this is our, your, this is our first video. So my name is Holly Stewart and I'm going to be teaching from the Breen Builders chemistry book. It's this blue book. And if you're somebody that has a hard time keeping yourself organized, I would also recommend that you go to the Breen Builders website and I'll link it below and you can print out worksheets they're free and it has all the questions from the chapters on these worksheets that way you can answer them and keep yourself more organized and not have papers going everywhere so chapter one is all about measurements and chemistry and how we measure things in the different units that we use for some of you this may be the first class you have that most that pretty much will always be using the metric system and so this chapter we're giving you an opportunity to adjust to like converting between standard or the english unit system and the metric system so question number one asks which is longer one inch or one centimeter now for this chapter, you do need some type of a ruler. You will not need a ruler going forward for this book, but if you just have a basic ruler, mine has marks for my kids on it, but you can see that one inch is much longer than one of these centimeters. So one inch is longer. And one of the units you're gonna actually learn is that one inch is equal to exactly 2.54 centimeters. And so you'll read about that in the chapter. When you get to question number two, you've already read through a section of the book called Significant Figures. If this is your first time being introduced to significant figures, they can be a little frustrating at first, but what I tell my students is after this chapter, I don't personally take off points for significant figures being wrong, but I definitely like, I'll write a note, I'll frequently just say sig fig for short to encourage you to try to get these down. And I've noticed that by the end of the first semester, usually students have mastered significant figures. So if you get really frustrated with it, it's okay. We're gonna get a lot of practice with what significant figures are. But when we're doing a lot of chemistry problems, you're gonna have a lot of math problems that you're putting into your calculator. And if you put a number into your calculator, let's say you just type in the number four, your calculator is actually assuming that you're typing in 4.000. Like it's assuming you're very precise in your number. And so there could be a source of error in that number. Because if I mean four, it could be 3.9 or 4.01 or 4.1. There's lots of different variations there. So there's always this rounding mistake in the last digit. What we use significant figures for is it helps reduce or get eliminate those rounding mistakes. And so when you're reporting your answers to significant figures, there are three different rules to follow. These are gonna be a little bit different from what you've seen probably in your algebra class. So when you're given an answer in algebra, your teacher has probably always said round to the tenths place, round to the nearest hundredths place. But for chemistry, that place value that you round to depends on the measurements that you took. And that's why we have significant figures. So there are three rules that you need to know, and they are on page, page four, the bottom of page four. And the first is all non-zero numbers are significant. So any num digit one through nine, we consider that a significant digit. And then the next one is a zero is significant if it's between two non-zero numbers. So like this zero here, we're gonna count it as a significant digit. And the last part is that if it's at the end of a number and it's to the right of a decimal point. So three rules are if it is a non-zero number, so one through nine, if it is a zero and it's between two numbers like that, right? And if it's a zero and it's to the right of the decimal point, we're gonna consider this significant. Now, right now, you're like, why are we doing this? Well, when we do calculations, this step is gonna help you know how to round your answers. Question number two asks you to determine how many figures in each of these numbers is significant. And so for the first one, if it is all non-zero numbers, this is a non, these are non-zero numbers. And then we know that a zero between two non-zeros is important or significant. And then a zero, if it is to the right of the decimal point and at the end of the number, it is considered significant. So in this problem, we have one, two, three, four important digits or significant figures in this number. 
Now, if I were to use this number in a calculation with another number with four significant figures, we're gonna learn about that, I would report my answer with four digit significant figures in the answer. So it helps with your calculations and how you're gonna do your rounding. So let's look at quite at B. Um, this is a non-zero number, so it is significant. This is another non-zero number, so it is significant. This zero is between, do you see how these two zeros are between two significant figures? So these are considered significant, and so is the seven. So this one actually has five significant figures in this number. So for three, or C, for question C, six is a non-zero number, and so is nine. And a zero between two non-zero numbers is considered significant. Now, any of these zeros after these are not considered significant. They are not at the end of a number and to the right of a decimal point. They would actually, if the decimal was here, they're to the left. So this only has three significant figures. In question D, this is a decimal point. And so this is a non-zero number, so it's considered significant. This is a non-zero number, so it's considered significant. Non-zero, this is a zero between two non-zeros. And four, so this is considered significant. Now, zeros to the end of a number and to the right of a, question, of a decimal point are considered significant. So both of these numbers, those zeros count. So this one has seven significant figures in this number. Question number three is taking what you used in significant figures and it's applying it to your first calculation. There are two separate rules for using significant figures in calculations and one is with addition and subtraction and one is with multiplication and division. So this is an addition problem and it's telling me you have 3.1 inches and you're adding it to 8.991 inches. So the first step would be just to do the addition and so When I do the straight addition, I get 12.091. Now, when you're adding or subtracting measurements, the rule for significant figures is that you're going to report your answer to the least precise measurement. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna look at these two measurements and I wanna figure out which one has the least amount of precision in it. And I do that by seeing which one has the least decimal points. And this is the least precise answer. This is a far more precise answer. This one, there could be a rounding mistake in either of these two place values. And so if I was to report more digits past the decimal point or more significant figures, my math would be assuming that those are two zeros, but that doesn't have that in the measurement. I cannot make that assumption. And so since this is the most or the least precise measurement and it has an answer in the tenths place, I am going to report my answer to the tenths place because that is the only value or place value that I can assure has been pr like precisely calculated. And so I'm just going to have the tenths place here. So I'm going to round so zero well, to the decimal to the right if it is five or more, which it's nine, becomes 12.1 inches. Question number four, we're still working with significant figures and calculations, but we're actually doing a multiplication here. If you're doing this math on your like handwritten it out on paper, that is fine, but you're gonna wanna get a calculator for this class. As with number three, the addition problem, the first step is gonna be do the actual calculation. And so I get 409.5. Both of these measurements are centimeters, so centimeters times centimeters, and I get a centimeter squared. And now let's figure out how we're going to report our answer with the most, with the appropriate amount of significant figures. So first thing we have to do is we have to go to our problem or our measurements, and we have to determine how many figures are in each of these that is important or significant. And so for this one, these are all non-zeros. So there are three significant figures in this measurement. And for this measurement, there is only one. So when you're doing a multiplication problem, you're going to report your answer to the least amount of significant figures that you had in here. So like this is three and this is one. So one is less than three. So my answer is going to only have one significant figure. This is gonna feel a little weird at first, 
but this is going to have round to only be 400 centimeters squared. Now the four is your significant figure here. These two zeros are not significant because they are not at the end of the number and to the right of the decimal point. So question number five tells me that a laptop is 33.56 centimeters wide. And then it wants to know how many inches is that? And so this is a conversion factor that you may have already learned in algebra, but you just have to know this one. And that's one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. And so we're gonna set this problem up in a way that may feel like a lot of writing, but we're gonna be doing this style of problem setup for a very long time to this year. So I just wanna start with the steps correctly so that you can learn how we set problems up in chemistry. And some you may read about it, it's called the factor label method is the technique of setting up these problems. But I'm gonna take what I know, which is 33.56 centimeters, And I'm going to multiply it by some conversion factor or ratio. And I'm trying to get to inches, so I'm going to put inches on top. And I want to cancel out centimeters, so I'm going to put centimeters on the bottom. Now the numbers that go with this is 1 inch is 2.54 centimeters. And as you do your math, you'll notice centimeters is going to be canceling out. And when you put this in your calculator, you're going to put in 33.56 divided by 2.54. Now, to determine how many significant figures are in this answer, we are gonna actually go to the original measurement, not the conversion factor. The reason, and so the original measurement has one, two, three, four significant figures in it. And so we're gonna report our answer to have four significant figures in it. And you should get 13.21 inches. So for question number six, we introduced the part where we start converting within the metric system. I'm going to first solve this the way that the book solves it so that if you want to keep solving these the way the book solves it, that's perfectly fine. Then I'm going to show you the way that I usually teach my students to solve it that you can do much faster in your head. But it tells me that a the diameter of a United States dime is 17.9 millimeters and it's wanting me to convert it from meters. So I'm going from millimeters to meters. So I'm going to start with what I know. And I'm going to meters, so I'm going to put meters on top and I'm going to put millimeters on the bottom so millimeters will cancel out. And the conversion factor from meters to millimeters, there's two ways you can do this. The conversion factor they give you in the book is that one millimeter is one thousandth of a meter. The other conversion factor that you can use is one meter is one thousand millimeters. It's up to you. All right. I think the book uses these with decimals in them. There's a lot of ways to solve these problems. You probably have a technique that you use in algebra. And if it worked for you in algebra, stick with it in chemistry. But if you took 17.9 and you multiplied it by 0 0.001, your millimeters is gonna cancel out, right? Now you could also be using this conversion factor and you get an answer of 0 0.0179 meters. My original measurement has only three significant figures in it and so does this number because the zero here does not count. These are not significant. This is not at the end of the number and to the right of the decimal point. So now I'm gonna show you a way of doing these um, without all the work. And so, yes, my way is not using the ratios, but it works for me and it makes it go a little bit faster. We're going to be doing some of these conversions a lot. So don't just like skip over this part. But but I have an acronym that I use. Um, it's a little ridiculous, but it's King Herod died drinking chocolate milk. And sometimes you could say King Herod died maybe drinking chocolate milk. So in the middle, I have M, G, and an L. M can be meters, it can be grams, and it can be liters. Those are our base units. Right now we're just dealing with meters, but it could be grams 
or it could be liters. If you'll use the chart in your book on page 12, you'll see that K stands for kilo, H stands for hecta, D stands for deca, and then this D stands for deci, centi, and milli. So what I do is I take the number that I have, which is 17.9 millimeters. So it's down here, it's millimeters. And we're wanting to convert, you, and I'm gonna show you using king hair dye, drinking chocolate milk. We're gonna convert from millimeters to meters. So I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna say it's one, two, three hops to the left. So I can then take my decimal and just go three hops, one, two, three to the left, and then fill in any zeros. And that would put that in meters. This will also goes back in the other direction. If I have meters and I'm wanting to go to millimeters, I'm gonna be going one, two, three, three hops to the right. So you would just take your decimal point and you would go one, two, three, and you would move it back here. And that would put it back in millimeters. I like to use King Herod dye drinking chocolate milk. It's a little bit faster for me, but you do what works for you or what you've learned in algebra.